Um, so today I'm going to be talking about time management and a lot of my thoughts are going to come from, I used to teach a Bonji organized boot camp for photographers where I talked about, you know, getting yourself organized mainly because I was a hot mess when I was trying to run my own business and then, you know, and be a mom and all that crazy stuff. So I finally, I ran a photography business for 13 years and and it was crazy and um so i kind of figured out some stuff after a while on okay i gotta get my shiz organized or i'm gonna i got or i'm gonna have to quit basically and so um and and i want this to be interactive so if you guys have any thoughts feel free to jump in or if you have questions anything you want to add um this doesn't have to be all me but i did want to share some really helpful things for to help you guys that I'm now doing, they're now, um, there are things that I do, you know, that I don't even think about because uh, it's so ingrained in me, and I think they'll help you guys as well. So, um, the first thing is that, and if you guys have a pen and paper, I think that this would be helpful for you, is to write down, maybe list the most important people or things in your life. So maybe list like the five most important things in your life in order. So for me, I, and, and be specific, like I wrote, you know, God, number one, um, my husband, number two, my kids, number three, uh, family, number four, friends, number five, work, number six, um, health, number seven. And um, you could, you might have a totally different list, but that's kind of an idea of, the things that are important, you know, to me. And, and it helps you kind of look at those and then see where your priorities are. And then what I want you to do is we are going to align those priorities in a calendar. So, um, so I want you to think about when do you have date night, if at all. <laughs> And I have to say, I've been doing date night since my second child. I have four kids now. I've been doing date night for probably 10 years now. And it's been a lifesaver. Um, so I highly recommend it. Number one, because I just look forward to it all week. My husband does too. And let me tell you how we simplify it. Um, I, I used to just have a couple babysitters on my phone that I would text and say, hey, can you do date night on Saturday? It's always the same time. It's every Saturday from five to like 10. It's five hours long, which is another reason I love it. <laughs> um, but we, we would basically sit, I would just text a couple of those babysitters, see if they're available, line up a sitter probably around Wednesday because date night was my sanity. So I like, that was like a huge priority for me. Um, and then we didn't plan a thing. We would just hop in the car and be like, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? You know? And that was our date night. And it was fun because we'd just do whatever we were in the mood for. So, um, but it's been a huge lifesaver for our marriage. Um, hang on, I can mute someone. Somebody's tucking. <laughs> hang on. Oh, there we go. Um, so yeah, highly recommend date night. Um, what about girls night out? You know, if that's a big priority for you, if your friends are a big priority, make that happen like once a month or once a quarter. Um, that's really important for me. And I am trying to figure out a system for that because I, I just love, I'm, I don't know. I just love having like adult time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, because after being with a toddler all day, you know, you kind of want some conversation that's adult. So try to make priorities for that. Maybe if you want more time with your kids, when is your time with your kids going to be? Um, for me, I've tried to make it so that after school, this is what was one of my goals in 2015, was when the school, when all my kids got home from school, I was done working. My phone is away. I have to hide it for myself because I'm kind of addicted. So I have to pull, I go put it in a totally different room so that I can't hear any dings and I can't hear 
anything. And if you really think about it, um, it's not that long. Like for me, after school is like from three or th like three or three thirty till about five. And then at five, I have dinner time. I cook dinner. Like that's a priority to me is that I make homemade meals. Um, I'm nothing amazing, but I have a, from five to six is when I cook dinner. And sometimes it's five thirty to six, depending on the meal. But, um, so I have strategic screen time. So at five o'clock, all my kids get screen time and they don't get it any time before then. So, um, that means that it's actually really nice. It's kind of therapeutic to be able to cook dinner quietly, like having them, they get their time. I get my screen time. I, that's when I can go on Facebook. That's when I can listen to personal development while I'm cooking. And for me, it's like, Oh, I get some, like, you know, some, uh, my own screen time. So that's really nice. And that makes it so that, you know, dinner's ready around six or six thirty, And, um, I don't know. I, you know, some people don't do as well on a schedule, but I've just learned and I'm kind of an all or nothing kind of girl. Like my husband jokes that when, when I turn on the heat, <laughs> it's either like, freezing cold or like blasted hot. Like I just, um, I'm kind of one extreme or the other. So I had to figure out a system because I go crazy when I get interrupted by my kids. But I know that like my upline coach, Micah, she talks a lot about working in between the mom cracks. And if that's your, like, if that's your jam, if that works better for you, do that. But I'm just going to share what has worked well for me for several years running different businesses. Um, so so yeah, after school time, I put my phone away because my kids want my attention. They, they kind of like tease me about like being on the phone. And so, um, and then yeah, cook dinner. Um, I don't typically, I used to work at night, um, after my kids go to bed, but my kids are getting older now. So <laughs> I really try to have them in bed by nine. That doesn't always happen. Um, especially because I have like a teenager and, you know, it just takes forever to get four kids all in their bedroom, you know. But, um, so I really don't plan to work at nights anymore, but I used to do that all the time. I work from like nine to 11 every night. So, um, just do kind of figure out what works for you or what you tend to just, what you're kind of like end up doing naturally. Um, and, and here's one thing that really, really helped me was to make a work from home schedule. So now that you've added in your priorities in your calendar, I want you to add like, you know, make sure you're adding when you go to church or when you have soccer or when you have, if you work a part-time job, when your kids have dance, whatever it is, fill up your whole calendar with a typical week. And then you've got to, then you've got to um, find those empty blocks of time that are unscheduled and figure out how much of that time you're going to give to your business. So, um, for me, I, m my brain functions better. It's always been this way in the morning, like at night I'm like mush. And I've always been, even as a teenager, I had to be done with my homework by 10 or I was just staring at my math. <laughs> so I, um, I just, do better in the morning. Maybe you do better at night and maybe that's when you want to make some of your work hours, but I do better in the morning. So I've been really trying to wake up every morning at 5 30 AM and I work till seven. Then I wake my kids and get them ready for school. So that gives me a good chunk of an hour and a half to get my beach body stuff done. Um, I, I don't exercise then I just work on the computer then. And I try to do my power of threes then. And, um, and then when, so then I get the kids ready for school. We all have breakfast. We read scriptures. We, um, I get, you know, they make their lunches, they get out the door and then I exercise and my toddler, he plays Legos and I, and, um, so he knows like, okay, mommy's going to exercise and you're going to play Legos while, and he's in the same room. So we kind of have a system and I think it helps your kids too. Once when you have like this consistent system and when you're like, sometimes he tries to, to get to have screen time then, but I'm like, no, I need the TV for my DVDs. Right. So I'm like, no, you play Legos. I exercise. And 
he just, now it's like such a routine that he, you know, it's, he doesn't question it. It's just what we do. Um, so I try to work out between eight and nine AM because if I don't do it, then guess what? It does not happen. <laughs> so that's just what I've discovered from about myself. Um, we have, my son does preschool. And so that's also when I get my work done. And sometimes you guys have to, you'll have to be creative. Like for example, my son goes to preschool at my mom, my mom teaches preschool and it's in a different city. So I actually drive 30 minutes to take him to preschool. I listen to personal development on the way. So again, I'm constantly using any windows of time to get in that personal development. And I've been doing what Lisa recommended. Um, when I work out too, I've been turning on personal development instead of listening to the lame jokes. <laughs> so um, that's been awesome. Like I, I'm so excited because if you think about it, that's 30 minutes a day. That's like a good three hours a week of personal development. So um, anyway, so with, with, my pre with this preschool situation, I drop him off and I actually stay at my mom's and work on her computer while he's at preschool. So I had to kind of be creative with that. Um, so just think outside the box. There's always a solution. There's always ways to find chunks of time. Um, and then another thing that I think is really important is to tell your family, like tell your spouse when your work hours are, this is when mommy works. And, and my kids, you know, they know that on Wednesday nights I have beach body meetings and they kind of roll their eyes like, what are we doing tonight? I'm like, well, I have a meeting and they're like, oh, you know, but, um, I just have to keep sharing them. Like, this is what mommy does. This helps our family, you know? And so let your husband know too. Um, this is, this is when I'm going to work. I spent like when I did my photography business, I was like, I will be working every night. So don't, we're not, don't plan to hang out with me. Like I pretty much told him, um, we just, we, did decide on one TV night and that's still kind of our TV night and that's Thursday nights. Um, the other nights it, we would just either, and now I don't work at nights as much. So we usually just go to bed cause we're exhausted. <laughs> but, um, before I used to work and I think I just got so burnt out cause I've done it for like 10 years that I'm so sick of working at night. But, um, before it was like from nine to 11, I worked and he would do his thing on his computer and we go to bed. But I, that's why I think it's important too, because when, when your husband knows, Hey, Oh, okay. Well I'll get date night on Saturday night and I'll get TV night on, on Thursday night. Like he, they know eventually they'll get your time. It's not, you're going to, you're eternally ignoring them. <laughs> so that's another reason I like to have kind of like that schedule. Um, because if your kids know, well, mommy will be done at this time, you know, uh, and then you'll get my full attention. They just know what to expect and they're not, they don't feel like, oh, you're always working or, you know what I mean? Um, any thoughts before I move on or questions? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, one thing that is really important that I learned and, and I think as my kids get older, it's almost like <laughs> essential, um, is that I have, is I have days that I work and I have days I don't work. And for me, I don't work on Saturday and Sunday very often. Um, all that's when I work in the mom cracks is on Saturday and Sunday. Cause that's really our family time. So occasionally I'll wake up, you know, I'll get in like during nap time, I'll do, um, some beach body here and there on like a uh, Saturday or whatever, but mostly sat I don't work on the weekends and that's just the lifestyle I want because I want to have time with my kids. I want to have time with my husband for date night. I want to have time for church. I want to have time to take a nap on the weekend. And, um, so that's kind of, but it, it also gives me like an opportunity to take a break. I think it's so important that you kind of schedule those breaks into because then you're not getting burnout, right? If you were doing beach body 24 seven, you'd get burnout. It's just inevitable. So I always notice that I'm like so refreshed and fired up by Monday because I've taken off two days pretty much. And I'm like, Hey, let's do this. Um, 
But one thing that's really important to remember is that you are not a 7-Eleven or a Walmart super center. Like, you're not open 24-7. I think it's important to really set your work hours and decide when you're going to work and when you're not. And because um, I think that's when you burn out or when you um, start to go crazy is when you're like, oh my gosh, I got to answer this, this message from this client or whatever. So just really scheduling those breaks and honoring your own work time. That's one thing I struggle with because with beach body, well, with my photography clients too, if they message me, I feel like, oh, I've got to answer them right now. I'm going to miss out on this opportunity. Or they're going to go order it on Amazon. <laughs> right. Right. Um, and I, that's just something that I think you have to learn over the years is like people are, they can wait 24 hours. I think 24 hours is totally fine for people to wait. And even, even if it's on the weekend, they can wait 48 hours, you know? So they're not going to run away. Like, I don't know. I think, um, I mean, there are going to be times when you're like, Ooh, I, I should act on this. Like I, you know, like you were saying, if you don't want them to order on Amazon or if you can tell they're excited or whatever, but I would say generally like no one's going to die in <laughs> 24 hours. So I, I think it's fine to make people wait. Um, so another thing I wanted to talk about was doing the worst first. Um, <clears throat> if you guys have if you haven't ever read Eat That Frog, it's a great read and it's a quick one too. Um, I listened to the audiobook. And I think that it's such a good concept where you do the worst first. Like, and I'm not saying like get in the things that you kind of dread, like maybe your workout. You know, I don't I'm not like obsessed with working out. Um, it's more something I know I need to do, but I'm not like excited to do it so for me that's why I try to get it in you know by 9 um, before 9 a.m. because it's it's one of those kind of worst first things if there's something that you know like oh I really need to do this but I don't wanna that's the thing you should do first so um, I think that really helps you we kind of do that with our kids too is like we make them do in the summer, they have to do chores before they get, you know, their screen time or whatever, because it, um, because if you do like the easy stuff first, you know, if they watch screen time first, they're never going to want to do their chores because there's no motivator, right? So do that worst first and then you can reward yourself with like the easy stuff. Um, and let's see. Okay. So let's talk about different ways to be like productive and efficient with your time. Um, my mom just texted me today and was like, what, what planner, what day planner do you use? And I was like, I use post-it notes. <laughs> and she's like, don't you lose those? I know that sounds silly that um, I use post-it notes, but I'll tell you what happened. What I used to do is I used to have a big planner and I'd be like, okay, I have to do this and this and this and blah, blah, blah. And then I'd end up with this massive list that when I looked at it, I would want to throw up because I'm like, there's no way I can get all this crap done in a day, you know? And so we overwhelm ourselves easy. So I realized that tip, you know, I only work part-time in Beachbody. That's all I want to work because I've got four kids. I don't have time for to do this full time. And so realistically, I can only get like six things done on here. And if you notice, there's really only like room for, you know, six things on here. So that's why I really like post-it notes because um, I, don't I don't overwhelm myself and it makes me have to prioritize for that day. And then I just basically go through and be like, okay, I need to message this person. I need to do that. And so I go through and check it off. And, um, and then if I'm start it's starting to get messy or whatever, then I will, let's see if I have any old post-it notes then I'll just kind of redo a new post-it note. So, um, but that actually has really helped me be efficient because I think it's easy, especially on Facebook. You know, we all work our businesses on Facebook. It's easy to get on Facebook and be like, la, la, la. Oh, look at this Jimmy Fallon video. Oh, <laughs> la, la, la. You know, and like, we think we're working, but we're not. <laughs> and um, when you have, and I don't, 
these just stay right here on my desk. So um, it's like when I start being like, okay, wait, what am I supposed to be doing right now? <laughs> And I know I only have like this two hour window. So for me, it's like on your mark, is that go? Um, that I look down and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, I've got to do this. And then I just, you know, it's kind of like keeps my brain on task. And so that's really all I have on. That's like one of the main things on my desk is my little post-it note with my six things I'm going to do that day. Um, and then, yeah, and then I cross them off and then I just redo the list in the next, you know, in a day or two, once I've plowed through that one. So it makes you feel very accomplished because you're like, okay, I, I got the, that like three things off my six thing list, you know? And, um, and then you're not quite so overwhelmed too. Um, what else am I going to tell you? Oh, also one thing that I really, really think helps and that I would highly recommend fighting for <laughs> is having your own workspace because I used to work in the living room we had this like this like you open it up and um, and I thought oh this will be great it's like one of those closable armoire desks or whatever and I was like this would be great like I can close it I can open it when I need to well number one I like for me a desk is like a purse and I just fill it up how, no, however big it is. So I need a small desk because then I don't put too much junk on it. And then, um, having it out in the living room was actually super annoying for me because I'd be like working and then I'd have a kid climbing on my back. And then I, you know what I mean? It was like, you're like in such an easy target when you are in, I guess, a public area. And another reason I really like having my own workspace. Um, and I think it's worth, I mean, I'm, I think you can make it work in any home. Like we used to have our kids share rooms so that I could have an office. Like an office to me is so important because I wanted to also be able to lock my own self out. You know what I mean? That way you can really be like, okay, I'm working now. And then now I'm done and I have to go back upstairs and be part of the, of, you know, be with my family. It helps me to be more present and lock myself out. Does that make sense? So, um, I highly recommend that that has worked really well for me. And I've had, I've tried to make an office in every home we lived in, even if they were smaller homes or bigger homes, because, um, even if you have to put it in your bedroom, like put your desk in your bedroom so that you can close the door. So you can close the door when you're working and be able to focus without interruption. And then you can close the door when you're done working. Um, Okay, what else? Um, okay, so a couple of things that I also do is I use a calendar. Um, so there's there's always days, you know, obviously a post-it note's gonna, not gonna tell me what to do on Thursday or Friday or, you know, next week, right? So I use a an app called Calingoo, and I'll show you that. Um, I really like Calingoo. This is just the monthly view. There's like daily views. You can see I've got little time slots. Um, the cool thing about Calingoo is that it, it syncs with your, um, you can sync it with your Google Calendar and you can also sync it with, like if your husband uses this app or if he uses Google Calendar, you can make it color coded so you can see his, um, like what he has scheduled. So that's one of the main reasons I used it. Plus I love it because like, like here I have a, um, I have it set up. It says follow up with Christy, which is one of my potential coaches. So I, I knew, so like a month ago she was like, Hey, yeah, I'm really interested, but I'm kind of short on money right now. And so I said, okay, well, can I follow up with you? And in like a month or so, and she's like, great. And I'm like, okay, I will. This is happening. So I put it in my calendar for a month from now, which was today. And it says follow up with her. That way I don't forget because I, you know, I have mom brain. And um, <laughs> hang on, my son is screaming his head up. Just a minute. I don't know. Where is 
daddy. That's the question of the day. <laughs> um, see, see, my door was locked. Do you want to go find it? No, I don't. I don't want to it. Okay, come sit on my lap then. So anyway, that just really helps me for scheduling things that are in advance, and it will pop up. Like it, you can um, set alarms. You can set a pop up. It will email me also, and um, you can say like ten minutes before that time, it will pop, do a pop up, which is like a you know on your phone, like a little notification, or and you can have an email. Anyway, I just really like it because then I've got an email going to me that says contact Christy, and then I've got um, this little pop up on my phone that's like contact Christy. So this is my brain right here. <laughs> um, and that really helps. Uh, do any of you guys use any other calendar apps that you love? No, I like to hand write it out, so. Yeah, and, and that might be your thing. Like, if you're a handwritten girl, go with it. Don't fight it. <laughs> <laughs> um, another app that's really cool is called Self Control. And the thing I like about it is it just, you schedule in certain things that you want it. Maybe it's your work hours and it will pop, do a pop-up notification. So right now I actually have it written down that at eight o'clock I'm going to exercise 8 a.m. So every day at 8 a.m. I get this pop-up that says I'm going to work out at 8 a.m. It'll say work, work out. So it's kind of like this reminder of like, Hey, you need to work out Kelly. I do that, but I use the Google app on my iPad. Oh really? Yeah, it does all the same things, just the Google by itself. And is that for your calendar or for like a, a the calendar? They just, they used to only use the Google, but within the last month, they came out with a Google calendar app for iPads and iPhones. Uh -huh. And so it syncs and it emails me, it pops up, it does everything you're saying, but it's all within the Google. Very and it's nice. my husband's phone for his calendar. Wait. Very cool. I bet it's similar. He has Android, huh? Okay. I bet it's similar to the Calengu. Yeah. It I'll probably it out. They might be ran by the same people. I mean, you know, Google cool. might have done both. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to check it out and see what the difference is. Um, yeah, but I really do like this self-control one, too, because it... I guess it just kind of, like, reminds me, like, you need to be working out. And then it'll say, you should be done working out. And then it'll tell me when I want to read my scriptures and, you know, when I should be done. So it, you can set it up for like maybe your work hours. Here's my work hours. And I, you know, just kind of a good reminder. Um, what else was I going to tell you guys? Okay. Oh, another idea is to, and I haven't done this before, but um, it's one I heard at Super Saturday and that was to, Post your business hours in your team or your challenge groups so that your challengers know when your hours are and they're not, you know, demanding your every minute. And that way you feel like, hey, they know when my work hours are. Um, so you can, you know, let them know as well. Um, and then one, another thing that I have that really helps me. Sorry, did someone say my name? Okay, I'm just losing it. <laughs> um, another thing that really helps me is setting a timer. And I wish I knew where my timer went. Um, I really like using a timer that ticks. And I don't have it with me right now. I don't know where it went. Um, but having a timer. So let's say you do start working. You know, you know you only have an hour and a half to work. Um, setting your timer and being like, okay, I've got a message. These 10 people about the challenge group on your market set go. And you have like 30 minutes. If you set your timer, I am like so efficient then. I, um, because you got this ticking going, you know, it's like you find like an egg, a kitchen timer, an egg timer, and you've got this ticking going that just kind of reminds you what, um, to stay focused. Because I think that's one of the biggest challenges of like this generation, you know, is we're like so distracted, right? And um, and that way you're kind of competing against yourself. Like, okay, I've got 30 minutes. On your mark, set, go. 
Um, another thing you can do to just stay focused is to turn on your air, turn your phone on airplane mode, so that if anyone texts you or call, like you know, you will be focused on your work hours and not get distracted by your mom texting you or whatever. Um, and then another thing, like for me, I've gotten into a good habit when I'm on Facebook. I I'm generally on Facebook for one reason only and that's for work. And so I get on there and I'm like, okay, okay, go through comment, 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 um, check my messages. I'm really not on there for like leisurely fun reading time. And I think that's just something you have to kind of get in the habit of because it's so easy to get sucked in. And so just trying to use your Facebook and like be focused when you are on Facebook, like, okay, what am I here for? You know, refer to your list um, and get in and get out. That's kind of what I try to do. And one thing, oh, I am so excited. I'm so glad I remembered to tell you this. One thing that has really, really helped me with spending my time wisely is the Rescue Time um, software. Let me tell you, let me find the exact website. Um, because I had, this has been a game changer for me in being more efficient. It's called... RescueTime.com. Okay, so if you go to RescueTime.com and you download their software, you, it's so cool. It will email you daily or weekly or whatever you set it up for um, and tell you how many hours you actually worked on your computer. And the thing I love about this is it will tell you how many hours you were on Facebook. It will tell you how many hours you were in uh, Photoshop or Google Docs or whatever it is that you're working on and uh, it's kind of eye-opening for me like and that's I think that's why I got so quick at Facebook because um, when when I was doing photography I was like I would go in there and um, I knew that crap it, rescue time is keeping track of every minute that I'm on Facebook and I knew that you know as a photographer I wasn't on Facebook really I mean Sometimes I was on there for work, but generally it was a, just a distraction. So I knew every minute I'm on there is like a distraction. So um, I would get in and get out because I didn't want my rescue time stats to reflect that I was like on Facebook. And so anyway, it's really cool. I highly recommend it. It's free. Um, and just download it. Spend like five minutes um, downloading this software because it will be very eye-opening and you'll think oh I just work so much and then you realize like <clears throat> it will email you and say your this week's um, rescue time stats are you've worked 14 hours this week and you're like what like you feel like you worked a billion hours you know but it will tell you exactly how many hours you've been on your computer and and how many hours you spent on different platforms so that one was a game changer for me because it was like, oh wait, I really was, you know, I, I was spending way too much time um, being distracted. So what else? Let me make sure I haven't forgotten anything. I think that was everything I wanted to share with you guys. And then, of course, using your power of threes checklist, like, to go through and check off, you know, write down um, the people that you're commenting on, the people that you're messaging, that kind of thing. Um, but those are those are the main things I do to kind of try to use my time efficiently because I really only have these tiny windows of time to get things done. And, um, and I try to just make it a habit, like right after I'm done working out, I try to post in my, my Facebook groups. Cause I know if I don't do it that right after that, I won't do it at all. So I try to put, post something in the Facebook groups, the challenge groups. Um, and, and then I highly recommend, you know, working your own business, like doing those power threes before you get distracted by personal messages by maybe your team page or whatever. Working on yourself and those things before you do anything extra, I guess. So yeah, those are the, those are my thoughts. Any questions on all that?
or any additional tips you want to share? I have a question. Okay. Um, so when do you clean your house? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's such a great question. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> do you have like a house cleaner or something or do you make your no, kids do it? Uh, yeah, that's funny. No, I, my house is a pretty low priority. I'm just going to be totally real with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and my kids do their chores after school. So they kind of okay. help me with cleanup. Like, and we do dishes after dinner. So like six, we have dinner until about seven. Then we do dishes as a family. Um, and I actually hired a, oh, this is another tip that I highly recommend. I've been doing this for about four years now. Um, I hired a girl to do my laundry. So, um, who has got a loud background? Oh, it's gone. Okay. Um, so I hired a teenager. This was a while ago. My husband, I, I was feeling really guilty. I suck at laundry. It's never been my thing. Like I would just always get piles and piles and Finally, my husband was like, let's just hire someone to do it. And I was like, no, I'm the mom. Like, I'm supposed to do it. That's what moms do, you know? <laughs> and then he's like, no, seriously, like, let's just hire someone. And I'm like, okay, if my husband's talking me into it, like, why am I fighting this? Um, and so we hired a teenager to come over once a week. And she, I would wash the laundry throughout the week. And then when she comes over, I have a teenager that comes over every Wednesday. She's 13 years old. And she, um, I pay her seven fifty an hour, so it's typically about fifteen dollars a week, which is what forty five a month, sixty a month. Um, yeah, about sixty a month. So she comes over, she folds all the laundry that I've washed for that week, and I just kind of put them all in baskets. Um, we have like this shelf thing in our laundry room that's just like baskets of washed clothes she comes she folds them all and she puts them away and it's magical so um <laughs> that's that's been amazing because it also gives me a deadline i work really well with deadlines um and so it's like okay crap i gotta get all my laundry washed and by wednesday and then i know that like wednesday i'm gonna have all this clean fresh laundry in my drawers and um so that's been amazing and then we just do like you know me you know we do like the maintenance of our house as of my kids do chores that's kind of their thing and I try to clean up during like dinner time when I'm cooking and stuff I'll try to clean up so yeah got it oh and yeah, I need older kids <laughs> yeah it does help with older kids and Saturday <laughs> we always do big family chores on Saturday so like the bigger projects or like if the whole house is disgusting it's like okay hey, let's all <laughs> let's work together and get this cleaned that's kind of the stuff we have right now and one of my big goals for Beachbody is I want to get a freaking housekeeper that's a big one <laughs> that'd be amazing <laughs> mm -hmm. that's on my it's on my vision board it's happening any other questions? Okay. Well, hopefully that helps you guys a little bit. Um, I'm sure you have your own systems in place, but I think the key is, is just kind of like finding what works for you, what you're drawn to. Like Jill was saying, if she's not, if she's not a, a, a digital person, like using the paper stuff or, you know, just finding your thing and, and not fighting it, I guess. Um, but yeah, hope that helps you guys, and thanks for joining, and have a killer week. I think May's going to be an awesome month. I'm so excited about it. Thank you. I'm too. I'm excited to try, try body. Yeah. I'm too. We're all going to be, like, ripped. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. Well, we will just, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. We're going to do um, a loop giveaway next week, so... Join the fun next week with our, our next loop giveaway for the month. And if you don't know what that is, it's an Instagram giveaway that we do as a team. So it's awesome. Thank Remember you, Kelly. Me, like, sisters. Thanks, Kelly. I head down at like 9 o'clock at night, too. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I know. I lose my personality. I'm like, hmm. Yeah. I know. I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah. And you're on Eastern time, so it's bedtime. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys. Well, have a good night. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.